What is up guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how I make transitions in my house music projects. It's actually not that difficult. Ready? Let's jump straight into the project. Okay, so a really good transition for me is when you can go from one section of the song to another in a more smooth way. So for this video, I have this small beat idea. So right here on the screen, we have a drop that I wanna have to go into a breakdown section, which is this part over here. So let's have a listen. So the problem here to me is that this is like not trans a transition in like a smooth way. So we're going from like high energy to this really like low energy, just like suddenly. So I want to make sure that the listener is not going to be like interrupted. Like, so they pay attention to like, it's going from high energy to low energy. It's more to be like in a smooth kind of way. And we can do this in several ways. So what I usually start doing is actually removing some stuff. So using silence just before a change. So going from one section to another. So right here where we're going from the drop to the, the build down, I usually like to take away some of the kick drum hits. So we could remove these two here. So we have some silence here. Then these loops down here are some hi-hat and top loops. We could actually highlight every one of them and just remove maybe something like this and do a small fade and we can also take i have some more hi-hats up here and an open hi-hat here and then i have like a kick percussion which we can also remove so let's have a listen to what this does <laughs> so it works pretty well with the clap because now you can hear okay it's actually doing something there is like a change happening right now and i can hear that so using silence just before and a change or another section when you're doing transition is actually pretty effective. So we can keep on doing something with the drums. I really like to do like adding some delays and a little bit of reverb, like with automation. So we can go, I have all of my, these blue elements are my drums and these are routed to a drum bus. So that means I can apply an effect on all of my drums. So I go and pick the fruity filter and I set this to low pass mode, and then we go and right click the cutoff frequency and create an automation clip. And then I want to make starting from here and to where it's going to do the transition. I want to make like this going down slope. So we have something like this. So it kind of like low pass away some of the high ends of the drums, and it just makes it a little bit more smooth and then it actually works pretty well to have like the clap here in the breakdown to start with some low pass filtering and then it can slowly open up the filter but we're not done with the drums yet so we can also try to play around with adding some delay so we can go and grab the fruity delay, delay free put down the input up here to zero and then we're gonna automate this slider here so create an automation clip for that and now we're basically just gonna feed in some of the delay effects to all of my drums and we could maybe try to make like a like a really steep slope right here and we can just fade it out here so we have something like this so here it's gonna get like this small tail we can actually change the time signature so going to this like three to zero and maybe put it to ping pong mode and I also like to add a little bit of feedback and then using the cutoff like a low pass. Really cool effect. Okay, we can actually do one more to the drums. So we can also go and grab a reverb. Yes, just using the fruity reverb too. Put up the size, remove a little bit of the low cut, add a little bit more high, high cut. And then I want to add like a more stereo separation. I'm going to turn the width all the way down and then a little bit of decay. So basically we're just going to automate the width knob. So it's going to feed in some reverb to the signal, to the drum bus signal. 
just be a little bit careful that you're not going to add too much of this effect because it can be a little bit too much. Really cool. That's like, now it's going to get like more smooth going from one section to another. So I think I'm going to keep the drums for, for now. So one thing that you can do when you're trying to go from one section to another, if you look at these yellow elements down here, these are all my melodic components. I have a grand piano. I also have a background piano melody and a synth pad playing. This, these elements are not playing in the drop. So I'm actually switching from these elements here to this, these elements in just like this. And it can be a little bit like too sudden. So what we can do is that we can actually take the synth pad and then we can just keep the last part here of the synth pad. And when we play it, you hear like, like it's going, if I just solo here. So you just get like a small teaser of that synth pad just before the breakdown section happens. That's like really effective to do this. So just try to introduce some of the elements just before the section, because that can also be like a great transition to going to the, the other section. So I want to do something with this grand piano. So I want to bounce this, this grand piano loop here to audio because I want to reverse the first chord hit and then make some sweeping kind of effect. So I go here and right click and go to consolidate track and I select time selection. And right now FL Studio will just make an audio clip for me for this grand piano because it's a little bit easier to work with. But we go to the, the audio clip that we just made and we're gonna go to the sampler and then we're gonna reverse it. And then I'm basically gonna take only the first chord which is this one up here. Just gonna zoom in a little bit and then we're gonna do like this. We can do a small fade here and we can actually do a little bit more details. So we're just gonna make it fade in so we get something like this. And that's pretty nice to do that. We can add a little bit of volume to this, to the sample. And I'm actually not done using this. So I'm gonna put this to a mix track. I can just press track up here. And then now I have like a lot of effects right now, like a lot of channels, but I'm just gonna route this to my instrument bus. I'm gonna add like a really long reverb tail to this one. So adding like around 70% of dry wet to the reverb, a lot of decay and a little bit of size. And then we can also put up the stereo with a little bit. So we get this. Okay, let's try to listen to this in like the context with all of the other elements. Really, really cool. Okay, I know you're enjoying this video right now, but I really need your help. Only 14% of you guys are subscribed to my YouTube channel. So do me a huge favor and smash that subscribe button for more awesome tutorials. That's all, thank you so much. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, so we can actually go and do something to this bass line that we have right here. I think I'm gonna do something with the cutoff of the bass line. So basically just opening up the filter a little bit more. I'm, the bass line is being done in Monarch, which is a plugin from Native Instruments. And we're just gonna automate the cutoff knob here. We're gonna click this knob up here, and then we're just gonna twist the knob that we wanna create an automation clip for. So we have created one here, and then we can just copy the value here, and then I can just make this, where it's just opening up the filter. So that's the effect that we want. And then we can actually do some more stuff with this baseline. So we can go and we can also add a delay. So something like this. Maybe do this. No, the other signature was, was fine. Then put this to yeah ping pong mode and a little bit of feedback, turn down the cutoff. Then we're gonna automate this dry wet knob. So you see like for this transition, it's all about doing 
some automation work. It can really do wonders. And then one thing I want to do to this baseline is that I just want to add high pass filter. So it's just removing the low end just before the transition. That's a really effective DJ effect. I'm going to pull up the fruity parametric EQ2. And then if you go up here to the presets, we can go and grab the, I think it's called, see this one. Yeah. Because then we just have these two knobs here. And then I can just use this right here, go down here to frequency and we select create automation clip because then we can just increase this value here just before the transition. So we get like this, like more high pass filter effect. So now we have this. Really cool. Okay, so that's it for the baseline. I think I want to go down and do something with the vocals down here. So these are like a lot of vocal chops. So for the vocal chops, I have like this last phrase down here. And I actually want to duplicate this to happen twice, maybe. So we can try to have this playing like then maybe move like a little bit of that intro. And maybe we can also take like I have these like smaller chops up here. We can just put it, this in here as well. So just before, maybe have like I'm going to have these like two times, so maybe something like this. I'll turn up the volume a little bit. There's like this small like circle down in the bottom of these samples where you can just quickly boost the volume. And then I want to do something a little bit crazy with these vocals. There is a plugin called Effectrix, which is from Sugarbytes, I guess. Yeah. And this is just like a multi effect unit. So we can do like a lot of, there are like these crazy effects, like creative effects, it's like stretch, reverse, loop. There's also like a vinyl tape stop thing. And I think this is like great for doing these like um, when you're doing like transitions, like fills and stuff, and also maybe like add some filtering. I don't want to go too much in depth with this plugin. Um, I have another video that you can watch if you want to like get more into depth with this effect tri tricks plugin. It's uh, you can click the link up here or up here to watch the video. So right now I'm just basically making like some effects that's gonna play at the end here. So that's gonna be like at the end of the bar. So let's just have it. Just make sure that everything was playing. Okay, so I think we're gonna do this a little bit before here and also do like the reverse effect. Maybe the stuttering also, that's pretty cool. Go here and just the stuttering a little bit. Okay, that reverse thing was not working and not the loop, so I'm just gonna keep this. And then we're gonna do, just gonna modulate, automate the mix, master mix here of the effect tricks because I don't want this effect to be happening all the way through. It's just gonna be this last part here. So it's just gonna be here. There's like a crush effect down here, which is like a distortion effect that's pretty effective. So we can use that. Just turn down the mix. This is a bit, bit crusher. Sample right down. I think this one's gonna be turned up a little bit more. Like these samples.
equals zero. Okay. So one last thing that we can do for the vocals are the basically also just adding a little bit of delay. So using delay free, just rinse and repeat. So create an automation clip for the web and then just create a shape like this. Nice. The last thing that I want to do with the, this specific transition is just to add like a simple um, transition, basically, what it's called. So it's just like a, a reverse cymbal crash with some reverb on it, and they sound like this. So it's just this kind of effect. And it just works really well for like going from drops to breakdowns, in my opinion, because you get this more like, uh, you get this tail from the reverb, and it's a little bit more like soft. It's just, it just bridges the two sections nicely together, in my opinion. That's, that's pretty, pretty cool, in my opinion. Like now everything is just going much more smoothly. So this is like what we had in the beginning of the video. And this is what we have now. Like it's just much more smoother in my opinion. And this is like what I will do most of the times when I'm trying to make transitions from different sections in my songs. So basically doing a lot of automation work using silent as we did in the beginning. Also trying to introduce some element just before the section, doing like these reversed chord sweeps. You can also do this for vocal if you want to. You can just take a small snippet of the vocal and add some reverb and then bounce it to audio and then reverse it. Then you have like a vocal riser, like a re reversed vocal reverb, which also works well to blend in together the sections. And also doing like some some filter cut off to some of the, the instruments, like the bass line, as we did here. And also for like the vocals, this like effect tricks um, plugin was like a little bit weird. It didn't behave like the way that I wanted, but it can add some crazy and creative results. So trying to do like some small fills here and there and try to rearrange some stuff, like what we did here with the, the vocal chops that we took some stuff, some small chops here and put them in the end and also chopped up this part here and also duplicated it. So these are like some ways where you can add some variation to these like transitions and also trying to use like cymbal sweeps and also small risers and stuff. But usually what ties your section together the best, in my opinion, is to use the elements that you have already in your song and just try to make a transition effect out of them. So yeah, that's how I do transitions in my music projects. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, it means so much to me if you smash that like button or even subscribe to the channel. I've also launched a Discord server for producers. It's a place where you can share your tracks, you can get feedback, bright feedback. It's generally just a cool place to hang out and talk about music and stuff. And I really want you to get involved if you want to. You can join the Discord via the link in the description down below. If you want to support this channel even further, you can go and check out some of my sample packs and preset packs on the web shop. The link is in the description down below as well. So I hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Peace.